Did you know that the best martial arts schools in the entire world come from a few small Muslim villages in Russia? You see, back in the early 1500s, Russia looked like this. And for the next 400 years, they expanded their territory, conquering all of their neighbors until they finally peaked at the Soviet Union in 1945. And one region in particular, just north of the Caucasus Mountains, was home to some of the fiercest mountain warriors, and they were all Muslim. You have the Chechens, the Dagestanis, the Ingush, the Karachai, the Nogais, and a bunch more. And they didn't just let the Russians come in without a fight. Since the late 1700s, when Russia first invaded, up until as late as 2009, there have been constant waves of rebels after rebels after rebels. And the Russians didn't appreciate this. Under Stalin, the Muslims of the Caucasus were heavily oppressed, with entire populations being massacred or starved to death or depopulated by being forced onto trains taken to Siberia. Some estimates say that a quarter of all Chechens and a third of all English were killed in the process. And it was only after Stalin died that they could move back to their homelands. Needless to say, with all the constant warfare and oppression and even just the fact that it's very difficult to build infrastructure in the mountains, Caucasus region was left extremely poor. Now, one thing that the Soviets were good at was sports. They used sports as a way to show the world that the Soviet Union was a functional and even advanced country and that the Soviet people were well off and healthy. And maybe they could convince other countries to follow their communist model and even become allies with the Soviets. They excelled at combat sports and became masters of wrestling and even invented their own styles and perfected them. And it was through the sports that the people of the Caucasus found hope. Those who could rise in the ranks and become champions could escape the poverty of the Caucasus and gain respect and admiration of the people. Something similar to the ghettos of America were often the only way out is through sports. And when the Soviet Union fell, Putin was in charge and he continued promoting sports, even releasing an instructional judo DVD in 2008 called Let's Learn Judo with Vladimir Putin. And it was during his first years in office that the Muslims of the Caucasus became the number one priority for him. He fought a war with the Chechens in 2000 and the rebels continued a guerrilla war up until 2009 and he needed to develop the Caucasus nations, incorporate them into the Russian society and give youth hope to get them off the streets lest they start rebelling again. So he worked with the leaders of Chechnya and Dagestan to fund and promote combat sports, especially MMA. And so with the combined factors of harsh living conditions, desperation, a warrior culture, an Islamic heritage, and a government that heavily promotes MMA, it's not difficult to see how fighters from Dagestan and Chechnya have become the best in the world and how every year there are more Muslim champions coming out of the Caucasus than the last. Like a follow for more. Muslim facts.